Welcome to video games. F you. Yo, God. There's so many. There's so many interesting sort of elements of old games. You can just sort of you you can like smell an old game. You know, like you look at it, you're like, mm, yeah, that smells like '82. Welcome back to another episode of Let's Play Thousand Games. I'm your host, Gaming Jay, and today we're playing Russian Attack. Russian Attack. Uh, obviously, a play on words there. Rush and attack, or Russian attack, um, has possibly one of the fastest title screens I've ever seen. Did you guys see that title screen? It was on the screen literally for a second. It, it was so fast. Um, this game originally was an arcade game. It was eventually ported to uh, home computers like the Commodore 64 and Amstrad CPC and BBC Micro and all those good old systems. Uh, and then eventually onto the NES. Today we're going to be playing the NES version, although I do want to check out the Commodore 64 version because it's known for having an epic opening title screen. And I got to see what this title screen is all about. Um, the, the background story for this game is that you are rushing into a base to save a bunch of POWs who've been captured during the Cold War. Slash, in the NES version, they actually changed the story to say that you were going to hunt down a secret weapon. Um, and they actually added new levels and all sorts of stuff for the NES version. So I'm excited. This game looks like just a classic, basic, old Nintendo game. The kind of games that I grew up on, you know, these kind of games were a dime a dozen, but not in a bad way. Like... This is just like an NES game, a prototypical NES game. So I am down to play some NES today. Destroy the enemy secret weapon, good luck. I love that sort of uh, background there. It looks like a whole city and stuff near the mountains. That's pretty cool. All right, so B stabs. A, A does nothing, oh, okay. And uh, these enemies, by the way, it looks like they're a Civil War turn of the century, you know, like British soldiers or something like that. It looks like I'm, I've traveled back into, like, the 1800s, and I'm, uh, killing, uh, you know, uh, British soldiers in the War of 1812. The war where Canada and the U.S. went blow to blow. And, uh, Canada burned down the White House, baby. Yeah, you heard me right. We gave you Americans a run for your money. Nowadays, we may seem all peaceful and docile, but mess with us, we'll burn down your house. <laughs> all right. So, uh, the rocket launcher. Oh, that's weird. Okay, up is to jump. Oh, great. I'm gonna love this. Um, okay. I, I hate when games make up jump. It's just so, like... I, I find it's just, like, it's hard to do precision platforming. Not that I think this game is gonna require it. Uh, but, uh, also I feel like I accidentally sometimes press up and I'm trying to move left or right. You know, you rock your finger on the D-pad and you accidentally slide it a little too high. And see, there you go. You jump. Um... But I'm trying to save ammo. Kabloom! Oh god, a ninja kicked me! Wait, and I'm dead? I died to a single ninja kick? Oh, we, are we at the back of the beginning of the level? Um, oh no, we're halfway through. Okay, wow. One hit kills, and you don't even respawn where you die. Alright, today's gonna be interesting. Um... But yeah, jumping accidentally when you're rocking your finger back and forth, pressing up, it's just... Not, not good news, so... We'll see how today goes. But, uh, oh yeah, come here, buddy. I know your tricks! Nobody's gonna ninja kick me. I'm on the way to blow up the enemy's secret weapon. I mean, the enemy has, like, missiles and tanks and all this stuff. What kind of secret weapon could they possibly have? Like, look how big these missiles are. We don't want to blow- you guys sure we don't want to blow these ones up just while I'm passing by? Just, uh, I could just lob a grenade in there. Detonate it. Now, these, these ones are all good to go. I guess they're only pointed at mountains, so... <laughs> these are like if the mountains get out of line. Oh god, that was an accidental jump. Uh, these missiles are like if the mountains get out of line. We're gonna let them have it, man. Um, oh god. Back off, buddy. Oh my god, fire bazookas! Fire bazookas! Okay, you only get four shots with the bazooka, so I wanna like, uh... Be cautious with it. Oh god, that's it, eh? That's it. Yo, god! It's kinda scary, cause like, one hit and you're dead. Oh, we passed a level! Well done! First target... Oh, overcome. And then he escapes from the base. They dropped him into a base, they were like, destroy the enemy secret weapon, he's like, I will! And then he just runs away. <laughs> he, like, first chance he gets, he flees the base. 
he's like a Suicide Squad squad guy, but he's uh, gotten rid of the chip in the back of his neck that's gonna blow his head up, and he's like, psych, I'm not actually gonna help you destroy the secret weapon. I'm in it for me. I'm getting the hell out of here. Um, so yeah, a lot of this game is just sort of running around, knifing people. Nice of the army to give me a knife on my secret mission to blow up the enemy's deadly secret weapon. They couldn't have given me a gun or anything. They're like, here you go, Chuck. Here's a knife. You know what to do. Look, there's a guy shooting at me from a guard tower. I have no way of attacking him back. I just have to, like, hope... He's a terrible shot! <laughs> he shot me in the butt. Forrest Gump style. That's the war injury Forrest Gump gets from Vietnam. Something bit me, Lieutenant Dan! I joke, but that is legitimately a great movie. I can't help every time I sort of catch the tail end of that movie on TV or something, or I walk in a room and somebody's in the middle of watching it, I'm like, ah, I'll just sit here for the next two hours watching the rest of the movie. Why not? Oh, God. Oh, man, that's hard. Crap. Am I dead? <laughs> we, we can't get past level two, man. This is crazy. Definitely feels like an old arcade game where it has a, that like brutal difficulty Like level one is like pretty hard and then level two is like off the charts, dude I feel like that was one that's another thing that uh, video games have gotten better at over the years is like Refining the difficulty so that it's more of a gradual challenge rather than like an instant spike um, There's many games um, the only one I can think of off the top of my head is, uh, Conan. Uh, I think the Angry Video Game Nerd talked about it. Um, but that one, it has, like, a really cryptic, difficult, confusing crap. Oh, God! Oh, those guys shoot guns! Um, game over. It has a really cryptic, difficult first level, and then all the other levels are pretty linear after that. Um, and it's like, why would you put the most difficult, cryptic, confusing level first? Because it means 90% of your audience, which are kids, are never going to see past the first level. And they just, you know, they'll play the first level a few times, not be able to pass it, give up, sell the cartridge to a gullible friend at school, and go buy Mario 2. A much better game with a more reasonable spike in difficulty, you know, gradual increase. Um, yeah, I feel like developers didn't necessarily figure that stuff out until later on. There's so many, there's so many interesting sort of elements of old games you can just sort of you, you can like smell an old game you know like you look at it and you're like mm, yeah that smells like 82 it's like a lot of the original um console games for home consoles are actually ports of arcade games because arcade games kind of came first you know like arcade games were really out there there's lots of arcade games people didn't really have home consoles some people had atari and that was about it uh, well, there was in television and Magnavox Odyssey, and there were some other things, of course. Um, I exaggerate all the time. But anyway, there, there wasn't a ton. And, um... Oh, God! Oh, my God, I can't believe I survived. Um, anyway, because game developers sort of came from an arcade background, I think there was this mentality that home console games should be just as brutally hard. Like... Arcade games were designed, crap, to be hard to steal your quarters. Like, you didn't want somebody playing for more than 30 seconds. But for some reason, when the developers knew they were making games for people to play at home, where they could play for, like, hours and hours, and... Oh, crap, that's so hard. Um, they did, it didn't occur to them to make the games a little easier. And so many arcade games are just, like... Or, sorry, many ports of early arcade games, even the home versions, are just, like, brutal as anything. And they, like, don't give you an inch of ground, man. They're just like, welcome to video games. F you. You know? <laughs> you, you have to really love this stuff to play it. Because you're not gonna play it because it's fun. If anything, it's incredibly aggravating! Welcome to the world of gaming. And almost in a weird way, I wonder if that's why, like, gamers... Gamers have this sort of attitude, this thing. I mean, I have it too, where it's like... You want to be considered good at a game, and... I don't know, gamers get, like, salty or possessive. Like, I, I, I don't know how you would describe it, but you guys know what I'm talking about. We're like, people who are like, I'm a gamer, man. If somebody's like, oh yeah, I like Candy Crush, they're like, you're not a gamer. It's like, it's like people are like, you haven't suffered the way I've suffered. You've never had to play Russian Attack. Don't talk to me about a hard level in Candy Crush. It's nothing compared to the NES games I grew up on. It's almost like gamers are bitter that they had to play such hard games. 
that uh, if any if any new person comes along who p grew up playing easier games, we kind of like look down on them and we like shun them. We're like, you didn't grow up in the NES, man. You don't know what tears are. Um, yeah. Uh, side note, by the way, this game is called Green Beret in, uh, in Europe. Oh, God. I guess in Europe, people don't know what Russians are, so... Um, or actually, I think this game was originally called Green Beret, but they renamed it Russian Attack for the states. Maybe, I guess, you know, the states in the Cold War, they were all obsessed with... You know, Russia was obsessed with the U.S., the U.S. was obsessed with Russia. The only thing they had in common was Tetris. So, like, it was a, a big standoff, you know, Russians and Americans, they hated each other. Um, and, uh... So I guess when they were reporting this game, they're like, hey, you know, it's called Green Beret, but those guys could easily be Russians. Crap. Why don't we call it Russian Attack, you know, throw a bit of Cold War paranoia in there, and maybe they'll move units. And so some kind of thinking like that led to the uh, title change. But when we check this out in the Commodore 64, I think I have the European version. It's going to be called Green Beret. Don't think I've messed up and I'm playing the wrong game, though. It is the right game. It is the right game. Um, I also have a feeling that we're just not even going to get past this, uh, this, uh, second level here. You know what this game reminds me of? <laughs> oh, crap. It reminds me of, um, what was the, we played a Sega arcade game where you were just a guy walking on a street, punching people with, like, houses behind you, and it was, like, insanely difficult. Oh, what the hell was it called? And then I played the Sega Master System version afterwards. And, like, it was similar. One-hit kills, you got locked into, like, a long jump animation if you jumped. There were, like, ninjas dropping down out of, and punks dropping down out of windows and stuff trying to kill you. I feel like I'm, like, that guy who's like, what's that guy who was in that movie and he has hair? You know him? I I'm, be I'm doing that right now, but I, I swear I've played this game. Somebody, somebody... You know, with a computer, can look it up on my channel. I mean, you all have computers. I don't know what you're watching. Well, you might be watching me on a phone or something. I don't know. You can't look things up on a phone. We've just gone through a weird, logical rabbit hole here. I'm just continuing to talk. I'm just going to continue to talk until it sounds normal. So the things I say start sounding uh, intelligent. Um, talking and playing video games at the same time is distracting, guys. I know you guys know this. And I know you're used to my random blathering banter these days, but, uh, for anyone new who might be watching, um, it is, it is hard to talk and play at the same time. You really, you really just have to, whatever comes out of your mouth comes, and you just gotta accept it. Because, like, you do not have enough time to sort of think through what you want to say. Um, stabby, stabby! I wonder if this guy would be played by Sylvester Stallone if they made a movie. Oh, God! <laughs> I, I played this first level three times, I keep forgetting those guys jump. Or you know who would be cool to play this guy? is Steven effing Seagal. Imagine that. Let's put that guy in a movie again. He's like 70 years old. I, the, YouTube's randomly been showing me clips of Steven Seagal's current movies, or current, I think, like 2014. I don't know if he still makes movies or not, but it's like, you, sh you should look him up if you haven't seen him. He is, like, old and fat, and he has a goatee that has clearly been dyed. Um, dyed, like, jet black, like, as if he still has black hair. And every movie he's in, he spends most of the movie sitting down, and it's, like, surrounded by the worst actors, and <laughs> he's still doing kung fu, though, somehow. But, uh, I say we put him in, uh, we put him in a Green Beret movie, why not? Or, uh, Van Damme. I feel like Van Tam actually is still fit, though. He made a commercial not that long ago, uh, where he was, like, standing between two trucks and, like, doing the splits or something. Like, I remember when, like, Van Dam and Seagal and all those guys, oh my god, we got past the truck part, uh, you know, would, like, compete and stuff to see who's, who's, like, the strong man, you know, and, like, Sly Stallone was in there, too. Uh, the ho who's the Hollywood strong man? And they would all have big egos and compete, and Schwarzenegger was in there, and na nowadays... Seagal's the clear loser of that, uh, little competition. I think we can say definitively. He, uh, he didn't win, uh, didn't win any medals? Oh god. Um, he lost his dignity. Oh god! Oh! <laughs> what was I supposed to do there? Man, this second level is brutal. All right, this is the last time we're playing the second level on the NES. We're gonna hop to uh, Commodore 64 in a second. 
But dear god, they do not give you an inch in this game. Feel like you've seen level one, the demo's over, punk. Time to get real. You gotta be a real gamer to play this. Where I get the- this is where gamers get the chip on their shoulder, man. All the pain from the NES era- oh, I jumped over that guy! Holy crap! You- ah! Oh, damn it. If only you could take, like, one more shot, or if, like, the jump wasn't so delayed. Like, once you jump, you can't control yourself in the air. You know? One of the giant, giant innovations that Mario made, it, possibly one of the most defining, you know, there's so many innovations in the first Super Mario Brothers that, like, we take for granted nowadays. But I think one of the most defining... Oh, he jumped while he was lying down. He did the worm jump. Oh, God! And then he jumped into a guy. Because up is jump, and I jumped involuntarily. I was climbing a ladder, holding up, and then I got to the top, and I jumped. Oh, my God. Anyway, there's so many innovations in Super Mario Brothers, the original one, that we just take for granted. But one of the, I think perhaps the biggest, is the idea of controlling momentum in the air. It was slight in Mario Brothers. You know, if you go back and play the original Mario Brothers, it was slight. In the later ones, he got more control of momentum. Um, oh, son of a bitch. Uh, okay, we're gonna try this one more time, actually, because I'm in the middle of a story. Um, but... The idea that once you jump, you can control your momentum, it makes no sense. And if you look at all the early platformers, you know, like Manic Miner, and, uh, like every platformer out there, even like Donkey Kong, and, uh, Mario Brothers, the arcade game where it's Mario and Luigi, uh, you know, like, competing in, like, battle mode. All those early games, even the early Mario ones, once you jump, you can't control your momentum. And many of them also had fall damage. If you jumped from too high a height, you died. And those two things 100% make sense. It 100% makes sense that once you jump, you can't control your momentum, and that if you fall from too high, you die. They make sense in the real world. In video game world, those two things are not fun. Those two things suck. They're ba they bad. Um, and Super Mario Brothers, you know, Miyamoto kind of realized that by the time he was making Mario Brothers, and he was like, you know what? When you jump in the air, you can change your mind. Um, and it might not have made sense, the, you know, physicist that Nintendo uh, has on retainer to ensure that their games, um, you know, match the physics of our world, probably uh, was very unhappy with that decision. Uh, but, but the result, the result is good gameplay mechanics. And literally, you know it's a good gameplay mechanic because everyone has copied it since. Like, find a platformer these days where when you jump in the air you can't control yourself. They almost don't exist. There's probably a few out there, you know, and, and the savvy fan who's watching right now can, like, point some out to me. But by and large, they just don't exist because when push comes to shove, reality, you know, if reality is getting in the way of fun in video games, reality needs to go. Um, well, in, in most games. In some games, you might actually want reality over, over fun. Um, but... Uh, yeah, so so in, in more modern, in almost every modern game, when you jump, you control, you, you know, where you're going. Like, think of Contra. You know, Contra is very similar to this. One hit death, you're, it's an army-based game. There's no melee in it. There's no knife. You just shoot guys with a machine gun and a rifle. But uh, it's similar-ish to this. But when you jump in the air, what happens in Contra? Your guy turns into a spinning ball, an acrobatic ball, and you can control that ball very precisely. No soldier in the history of mankind has ever jumped the way they jump in Contra. It's just not done. Humans don't... Human bodies just don't work that way. But it's good! It's... it's... That's how you want a video game to be, right? So... Uh, yeah, I feel like this game, part of what makes it difficult is it has just that old-school mentality. Um, uh, it's the old-school mentality on so many fronts. Let's be hard. Let's be, you know, brutal. We're, you know, we're not going to give anybody second chances, one-hit death, difficulty spikes, realistic physics, even though, like, who cares in a game, in a side-scrolling game where you're, like, knifing soldiers and stuff. Um, so, yeah. I'm not surprised this game is very hard. Oh, my God, that bullet moves so slow. Why do some bullets move fast and some slow? This guard can control the speed of his bullets. He's not human. Okay, run, stab... Stab! See, okay, I was in the air, and I it was I didn't mean to jump there. It was a mistake. My guy jumped because I, I I rocked the D-pad back and forth, and he just did a jump like that. Like I, I'm doing it by accident here, and so I was stuck in the air. I knew the guy was coming towards me. All I could do is like knife towards him, but I didn't land on the ground fast enough, so I was just dead. 
If this was Mario or Contra, I could have pulled to the right or left to either jump away from him to give myself more room to land or try and jump over him. You know, like there's so many more maneuvers you can do in Contra in tight spots because you can control your jumping in the air. Oh god. I can't believe I survived that. Is this guy gonna come back over here? You dick. Oh my god, I can't believe I survived that. Alright, we 100% need this bazooka. We need this bazooka to live, man. Oh god! Oh. Get out of here. Okay, this is the farthest we've ever been. Oh my god, we just walked into a guy! God damn it. Oh, son of a bitch. Alright, well, this is our last, uh... Our last shot on, uh... God, the NES. And then we'll move over to... Oh! It's like, you know what? My brain doesn't think fast enough. I see, like, a yellow guy. Oh, I got another life. And I'm like, oh wait, does that guy jump? Does he not jump? And then I'm like, oh, bullets! Duck! And by the time I've ducked, he's walked into me and killed me. Also, like, these enemies are not armed. Besides the guy who tries to drop kick me, or the guy who has a gun, these guys are just, like, literally bumping into me. This guy should not go shopping. You know, my, my character here should not go shopping on, like, busy weekends, because apparently if somebody bumps into him in the grocery store, he'll die. He's like, oh, my shoulder! I have, I have the bones of a, a of an avian bird. They're all hollow on the inside. I'm a terrible person to send on a dangerous mission. I don't know why the army recruited me. It makes no sense. Holy crap! I was screwed there. I got too greedy going for the uh, RPG. All right. Well, we can't pass level two. That is sad. That's the sad and embarrassing truth of of this game. A hundred percent. So this reminds me of my, my childhood playing the NES. I mean, honestly, if I had rented this on a weekend, me and my friend probably would have sat in his basement and played this for like three hours, taking turns, trying to beat it. Like we maybe would have got to like level three or four, honestly. And I think if I had more practice with this game, I could get a little further. It's just, um, it's part partially you need to memorize the levels uh, where the guys are. The guys aren't totally deterministic though. So you do also have to be reactive and know what the different guys do and be able to react, react to them quickly. Um, but, you know, it's it's a bit of my reflexes just aren't there and I also don't really know the levels. So, you know, when we get past a part I've never been at before, it's like, good luck because now I'm going to be at a part where I really don't know what's going on. I'm probably going to die like the computer just did. Anyway, let's check out the Commodore 64 version again because I think it has, it's supposed to have a really badass uh, intro title screen. All right, here we go into the world of Green Beret on the Commodore 64. Never get over the seizure-inducing color spasm all Commodore 64 games, not all, but most decide to give you when you're uh, loading them up. They're just like, hey, do you like seizures? Because blah, surprise! Kind of interesting, actually. I was gonna make fun of like how slow it's loading, but for some reason it kind of goes with the music. Like a slow fade in. Kind of a cool song too, actually, if I'm being totally honest. Kind of ominous, actually. I'm, I'm scared. I'm getting scared, guys. Is this game gonna kick our butt? This sounds so 80s. This is kind of awesome. That's so neat. Okay, now I don't know how to actually start the game. Okay, it's possible the game is still loading right now, but I don't have any way of knowing that. So I'm just going to leave it here for a little while to see what happens. I think it actually was loading. 
I just about given up and thought we were just in store for a giant magnum opus soundtrack here, but... Well, you know, as far as title, like, loading screens go in the Commodore 64, like, Commodore 64 is notorious for having really slow load times. At least they gave you, like, an awesome song to listen to. So I, I, I appreciate that. Oh, and here we go. Back to a seizure. All right, well, at least we know the game didn't glitch out and stall. Frankly, even if we didn't get the plate on the Commodore 64, just seeing that title screen is enough for me. I, I'm sold. They did a good job on, uh... Although now, I think... It did just stall. All right, well, <laughs> Commodore 64 version wouldn't load, so it was a bit of a bust, so... I guess we're, uh... We're going back to the NES version. Let me give it one or two more shots here. Um, I did want to try the Commodore 64 version for comparison today, but uh, I guess it's just not in the cards. Occasionally, these things happen, guys. It's uh, one of the challenges of working through this uh, 1001 Games book. I mean, um, I've criticized the book in the past for saying that, and other people have as well, that it, its selection of retro games is actually rather paltry, all things considered. I mean, they do have a number of retro classics, but they're also leaving out so many others. And they do seem to have an emphasis on more modern games, like a bigger emphasis than I think most of us would agree if we were putting together a game, a book of the thousand one video games you must play before you die. Um, although maybe I'm biased because I happen to really like retro games. Uh, but anyway, I have criticized and others have too that there's a bit, maybe a bit too much of a focus on modern games. However, um, the, you know, what we're experiencing here today is one of the reasons why, you know, retro games uh, can sometimes be tricky, and it's that, you know, they're hard to get a hold of, uh, they're even hard to emulate sometimes, um, and hard to get a hold of for emulators even, too, and, you know, like, if you wanted to play something that's, like, sort of semi-rare, like the Philips CDI, like, good luck, like, it's hard, I, I, I've looked in at, to even emulating that, because there's actually a few games I would like to, to try on my channel, um, from the CDI that I think would be fun, and... Uh, every time I've looked into it, I've just sort of, you know, after spending an hour or two fiddling around on forums and stuff online, I just give up, and I'm like, well, not this year. <laughs> One day, maybe we'll try a Philips CDI game. But, uh, yeah, I mean, the sad, the sad reality of retro games is that, um, they're not all maintained, uh, you know, by the original sort of companies that produced them. Um, you know, some games have you know, modern ports and stuff. So, for instance, I think there's, like, Xbox 360 ports of the arcade version of Russian Attack here. So you could play that. But, like, what if you want to play the old Commodore 64 version, right? Like, that's just sort of, like, try and find it on the internet, try and find it on eBay, try and get a working Commodore 64 or an emulator, and you're kind of left your own devices. And if it works, it works. If it doesn't, it's not like the publisher is going to come help you and stuff. So it's, like, um, a lot of these, like, older games you know, are in ways lost, you know, even, even games that can be, uh, em can be, uh, you know, like emulated and stuff, um, they can still be like tricky to play and get a hold of and all sorts of stuff. So yeah, this is a sad reality of, uh, retro games. Oh my God. That was a, do you see that sick move? Oh my God. We've never made it this far in this level. I'm actually scared for what we're going to find. If okay, let's not mess around though. We don't want to deal with any guys with guns. Cause that's just suicide. We're gonna use our bazooka. I pressed the bazooka button. I was getting. Do you guys see that? I was getting shot in the back while a guy with a gun was coming up behind me, and like that was just bad news bears written all over it. That was like a death trap there. Hey -oh! oh man! Again, can't believe I survived that. Okay, you guys die. Okay, let's just stab this guy in the the shins. I'm gonna try and save my bazookas for when it matters. Although, not like it helped last time. Oh my god. Die. Oh, you son of a bitch! <laughs> the edge of the screen death! Oh, I can't believe they did that to me. I can't believe they did that to me. Alright. Well, you know what the, the good news is? Is we're getting farther in this level than we have, uh, gotten before. That is a tricky spot there with the guy with the gun and the, like, ninja guy. They come at you at the same time. It is tricky. 
Right, get stabbed. Kill you. Come and get killed, buddy! Okay, here we go. It's real right around here. Oh god. Oh god, I can't believe I survived that. Oh no! Stop jumping! No! Ah! Oh! I can't believe I survived it! Oh god, run! The guard in the gun tower is gonna ice us. Oh man. Okay, run for it. Don't stop for nothing! Oh, we're somehow doing it! Oh! Oh god, I didn't even mean to grab onto that ladder. Oh my god. Oh my god, look at all the ninja guys down there! That is nuts. That is nuts. Okay. Oh, I thought the guy was gonna drop a bazooka! No! No! We died to a random Waco guy. The jerks would just sort of walk on the ground with no particular skills or abilities. Die. Die. Anybody else want some? Oh god, I meant to jump forward there. Okay. Kill you. Kill you. Kill you. Oh god, didn't mean to grab the ladder there. Whatever, it worked. Kill you. Oh god, oh, what is this? What is this? Oh, oh god. Duck? Duck? Ah! Oh! <laughs> it, it pushed me forward when it hit me. I didn't know what to do there. There was a guy chasing me, and... I was just in, like, bad news all over the place. Man, this is a hard game. This make a crazy drinking game. Actually, you play this with your buddies. That... You, you'd probably just end up dying of alcohol poisoning. Frankly. Alright, give me these grenades. So, oh, I forgot those guys jump. I don't know how I forgot they jump. God, they can't give you a break in this game. Alright, one more shot. One more shot, I just punched my microphone there, trying to talk. Alright, your mission is to destroy the enemy's secret weapon. Yo, can you give me a gun or anything? Like... Nothing, I just had this rusty switchblade. You're trusting me to wipe out the whole enemy base? With this? The enemies are giving me RP- The enemies are arming me better than my own people. My own people are like, whatever man, you got this. The enemy's like, here's an RPG, we feel bad for you. We, uh, 1800s British troops. Just feel so bad for you, dude. Here's a- here's an RPG. Have at it. You have some fun with that. <laughs> Alright, so this first level is really not that bad at all. They just- it really amps up in the second. I'm really curious to see if the third level is even harder, or if the second level is- is a difficulty spike, and it, like, actually is a little easier on the third. Uh, we will see, I guess. But yeah, learning what the guys do and reacting to them faster does seem to be, uh... something that's helping me. You know, like, I- I have it better memorized that the red guys jump. Uh, which sounds ridiculous, like, how hard is it to remember that? But, like, in the heat of the moment, there's, like, a red guy and a yellow guy coming at ya. It's almost like Guitar Hero, where, like, it, it, you know what? This is almost... Oh, shh. God, why didn't I react to that? I had- that was a no-win scenario, because there was a guy walking at me and a guy jumping, and you can't kill both. I should have fired my rocket. That's what I should have done. Um, you know what, let's reset, because I died on the first level, it doesn't make sense to try the second level, having died. Um, but this is sort of like, this is kind of like an unpredictable version of Guitar Hero. Guys are coming at you, and you have to press a button when they get near you, and you have to face left or right, and you just, you know, you can't miss. This is like Guitar Hero if you weren't allowed to miss. Kind of interesting to think about. Yeah! Although, we don't have the giant guitar peripheral. I wonder if anyone has ever wired one of those babies up to an NES and, like, tried to play something on it. I know there's things online where, like, people have beat Dark Souls using the Guitar Hero controller, you know, like... I don't know why someone thought to do that, but they did, and they could, and... You know what? Frankly, good for them. <laughs> A good use of your life. Um... But, uh, I wonder if anyone's ever tried to do it with, like, uh, an NES game. Or, like, I want- you know what would be even more funny? Is, like, typing out a resume on that thing. Like, hook it up to your PC, 
And like, uh, you know, I wrote a novel using the Guitar Hero controller. Like, that would be impressive. Forget about beating a video game. Write me, you know... Write a, write a research report using the Guitar Hero controller. Your colleagues come into your office, and you've got, like, the Guitar Hero thing. You're, like, standing up from your desk, sweating. Like, it looks like you're playing Guitar Hero, and they're like, what are you doing? You're like, I'm writing a grant application. What does it look like I'm doing? And you really are. <laughs> Uh, that- that- that would be- that would be impressive. Okay, there we go. So this first, like, boss wave is easy. Just stand over here. As long as you have a RPG, it's just three well-timed shots. There you go, and then just one more. Like, this is nothing. In fact, I'm pretty sure I could beat this wave even if I didn't have the RPG. Uh, but, you know. We have the RPG, so... Why sweat it? All right, can we beat level two? My gut says no, but I'm gonna try and prove it wrong. Gotta try and concentrate here. Take your bets now, folks. Make a prediction. Make a prediction. If you're really confident, you'd write your prediction in, your co in the comments right now. You'd pause the video and go in the comments and be like, Jay is gonna beat it. Jay is gonna make it to level three. And you would just stand by it, you know, because, like, obviously... Crap. If I don't make it, you're gonna have a prediction that's like, Jay's gonna get to level four, and then, like, I do not, and you're gonna look stupid, but... If you're a man, you're gonna leave that comment the way it is, you're not gonna edit that thing, you're just gonna be like, I, I made a prediction, it came out wrong, I, I believed in him when nobody should have. Go ahead, make that prediction. I'm betting nobody will. <laughs> You guys don't have faith in me, and I think that's sad. I think that's real sad! Oh, God! As I, like, almost miff it right there. I'm like, you guys don't believe in me. That hurts my feelings. Okay, kill, kill. Good. Everything's looking good. Man, if we do get to level 3, everyone who didn't post a comment is gonna be so sad. You missed an opportunity, man. Missed an opportunity. Okay. Oh god. Okay, that worked. Nice try, buddy. Oh, look at this. Oh god. You can even shoot up here? Ugh. Ugh. This is so tough. My, my palms are actually a little sweaty. I'm not gonna lie. Jeez. Once you start that jump, you really gotta commit to it. There's no hesitation. You, you can't undo a jump in this game. It's like once you jump, you're in it, man. You're in it. Oh, God. Okay, let's wait for this guy to come down. No, I jumped accidentally. My thumb slipped. Damn it. I, I, I knew I shouldn't have jumped there. Like, I, it's not even like I thought, oh, maybe I'll jump. Maybe that's a good idea. I knew I shouldn't. Didn't want to. My guy just, he had a muscle spasm in his leg, jumped involuntarily, and it killed him. How many people can say a muscle spasm in their leg? An involuntary muscle spasm killed them. Only this loser. This guy. Chuck Army Man. Oh god. <sighs> yeah, you want some? Okay, don't jump. Get the grenade, which I think is a useless weapon. Maybe it won't be at the boss. That's right, I said the boss. Oh god, no! <laughs> Two more lives to prove myself. I want everyone in the comments who wrote, Jay's not gonna pass level two to be ashamed of themselves right now. Cause you could've wrote that too. Could've wrote that too. Again, I think no one's gonna write a comment, but we'll see. Prove me wrong, guys. Prove me wrong. Oh God, oh God. Can't believe that worked. Okay. We're in it. Oh God. Look at this, it's just a giant <laughs> cluster of dudes down there. It's a dude party in the worst way possible. Let's just jump up here. Seems semi-safe. Aw, oh, you son of a bitch! I jumped into the bullet, too! <laughs> I panicked. I panicked. No, this is our last life. We have to beat this level. We have to do it. If I do it on this, this last life, it's gonna be epic, man. Okay, wait for that guy to go. There we go. We kill him. So this guy, the grenades are so useless. Like, they're beyond useless. I've, like, barely used them. 
Ah, god damn it. It's... There's so much happening, and it all, like, throws it at you, like, right... Right together, real fast, and can't think about anything. Alright, everyone who wrote in the comments that I wouldn't pass this level, you are correct. I hope you're proud of yourselves. Anyway, this has been uh, Green Beret slash Russian Attack. Actually, it's been Russian Attack because we didn't get Green Beret to work, but whatever, I'm going to put in the title and trick people into thinking this is com sweet Commodore 64 footage when there's none in here. <laughs> the best joke ever. Um, this is a game, started off as an arcade game, got ported to home uh, consoles. There is a Commodore 64 version that you can look up if you're so curious. Um, judging by the N64 version, it is hard as fuck. Uh, good luck with either version of this game. They are brutal. Um, they're definitely not impossible. Like, I was starting to get the hang of it. Again, I think if you gave me like two, three more hours with this, I could start to pass. I mean, I could certainly pass level two, I think. And it started to pass maybe level three, you know, like it's the kind of game that probably only has like six levels and they just kept it really hard so that people who paid 60 bucks for this to play on their NES wouldn't be mad when they beat the game in 20 minutes. It instead took them like three weeks, but not because there's a lot to explore or there's a lot of, uh, you know, fun, entertaining mechanics in it just because it's like hard, you know, like you have to have the reflexes of a demon. Uh, you know, uh, but anyway, um, yeah, it's, it's an interesting, an interesting little game. I'm curious why they put this one in the book over the many, many other arcade and NES and Commodore games that are also classics that were left out. In fact, I'm so curious. I've just opened up the book on my lap and I'm going to look up what they say about this game. See, it's under the European title because the authors were European. Green Beret. Age 97. Alright, here's what it says. The geopolitical Cold War climate of the mid-1980s provided fertile ground for developers of action arcade coin-ops. With the threat of nuclear annihilation hanging in the balance and one-man armies such as Sylvester Stallone and Chuck Norris. Now, those would have been good actors to play this guy in a movie. Um, on hand to save the day, rampant xenophobia was a theme of resonated just with audiences, blah, blah, blah. Most military-themed coin-ops were to consign their combined bashing and POW rescuing to specific foreign locales. Green Beret, however, was far less tactful, a gratuitous an antidote to prevailing platform uh, game cuteness. Upon inserting a coin, the players granted a glimpse of four squirming POWs roped to enemy posts. I guess that's in the arcade version. Blah, blah, blah. As a precursor to Contra and other run-and-gun experiences, Green Beret is a Twitch game par excellence. And a challenging one. Instead of cheap tactics, though, the game relies on constant barrage of enemy soldiers that eventually cause the player to lapse concentration. That is cheap tactics, damn it! <laughs> uh, as such, Green Beret is unselfconsciously one note, an or or orgiastic killing spree tempered by its crudely animated ape facade. Uh, you know what? I said I was going to wrap up, but TWIST! I'm looking at a screenshot in the book of the arcade version, and they have a flamethrower, and uh, I want to see that. So, bonus, encore, something? I don't know. We're going to check out the arcade version. All right, Green Beret on the arcades. Slamming a few quarters, and uh, give it a shot here. All right, there are the POWs that they were talking about here. And here we go. All right. Still got our handy knife. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. <laughs> For some reason, it's like more satisfying to kill people in this arcade version. It feels. Oh yeah, look at that. It's like you get a more visceral feeling of your knife. You can like feel it gutting them like fish. In the NES version it was all like uh, felt very like peaceful. Oh god, they like run for you too. Ooh, a flamethrower, baby. Yeah! Oh, he roasted them. Did you see their skeletons? Oh my god, that guy has a gun. Oh my god. Go oh, jump. Jesus, guys everywhere! Oh, I can't believe I survived that! Oh, I can't believe I survived that! I'm gonna try and hold on to the... Okay, forget it. Man, they, this is like way more fast-paced than the NES version. Dear god. Okay. Can we jump over the truck now that I fell right off? Okay, hold on. Oh god! No, 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 no! Oh, he punched me in the back! 
My guy's like, You beat me, I'm dead. I don't know why my guy sounds Russian. Uh, I was trying to jump from truck to truck, you cannot make that jump though. So the guys with the guns are like, well actually they're sort of like trying to hone in on you. Oh crap, I wanted that power up. So badly. I have a feeling that maybe I can just slam quarters in and continue if I die, so... I guess I'm being a little more cavalier with my life here. Okay, die, die. I mean, that flamethrower, man! That weapon's awesome. It's basically like the bazooka. In the NES version, it's just that, uh, you get to see guys' skeletons when they die, which makes it cooler. Oh! Wait, what?! <laughs> I thought I was at the boss and that guy was gonna run away, and he just shot me in the back! Okay. Do I get to continue? Um... Does it just start you right at the beginning? There's no- there's like literally no continuing continue? Okay, well, let's try and pass, uh, the first level here. And- oh god. Just see... I wonder if after you pass the first level and you continue, they continue you at, like, the second level. Not that it does us any good, because we can't pass the second level. And being that this game is, like, more frantic, it's not like we're gonna be able to pass the second level on the arcades, and we couldn't even do it on the NES. Jeez. Die. Oh god. Die. Jump! Oh god, oh god, oh god! You know what? The weird thing is, jumping in this game is less catastrophic than in the NES game. It feels like you land a lot faster from your jumps, and also, even when you're in the air, if you start knifing, you can hit guys on the ground a lot easier. So I almost feel like the NES version's a bit hobbled, to be honest. Which is weird, because usually the home ports are a little easier than the arcade versions. I mean, it's the- it is easier in the sense of, like, this is just chaos, there's so many guys running at you. So I guess they slowed it down a little on the, uh, NES home version. Oh god. No, I don't even have time to use the flamethrower, because there's just too many guys. They're just non-stop, man. Die, 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 die. I'm really trying not to let the, uh... The machine gun guys linger. Oh god! Oh, I thought I was gonna get run over. Okay. You can just knife these guys. Hey, there's no ninja kick guys in this. Oh! Speak of the devil! <laughs> okay. Alright, well now we know what the ninja kick guys look like. I was like, hey, that guy's wearing a, a lighter jacket than the others. As I say that there's no ninja ki kick guys, and then we get ninja kicked in the face. That is a hundred per- that's Gaming J- that's Gaming J Gold right there, people. It's like, me in a nutshell. Hey, this will never hurt us in a video game. Dies to it a second later. Ah, uh, yeah. But that's why you guys love it, right? For some reason you keep t turning back in. Giving me another chance to wow ya. We're gonna wait for this guy- and then flamethrower! Yeah, you like that? Nobody ninja kicks me. Flamethrower! Oh yeah, look how much faster he's running, actually. In the NES version, he has like a light saunter. He like saunters over to that fence. Alright, this second level looks way different too, by the way. Oh my god, a bazooka! Oh, he punched me in the gut! Maybe I should have ducked there. Okay, I'll try that this time. Duck. Oh god. Do I get the bazooka? No. Does this guy have a bazooka? Yes, give me the F bazooka. Okay, oh man, these guys really come for ya. Alright. Those guys there are guys crawling around on the ground down there. I can't believe I survived that. I'm somehow better at the arcade version of this. I don't know how that's possible. Hey, we haven't seen guys in guard towers yet shooting at us unfairly. That's a thing. Alright, game over. The big question. Not that it's really gonna change too much for, for us. We're about to wrap up. But, you press start. And I, I have a feeling you do not get to continue. You go right back. Wow! Oh my god, I thought this game was hard in the, the home consoles. In the arcade versions, extra quarters don't allow you extra lives, they don't allow you to continue off from where you died. You just straight up restart the game. 
Wow, that's one of the hardest arcade games I've ever seen in my life. Insane. Wowza. Well, anyway, as I was saying, this is one of the games of Book of Thousand One Video Games you must play before you die. I think, like, all things considered, like, this is a very hard game. For some reason, I find this arcade version a lot more fun than the NES version, but... They both sort of have that old-school, insane difficulty, yet... You kind of want to keep coming back and getting better and better at it kind of feel, so it's like, I do kind of get this. Um, I am sort of, like, kind of getting into it and wanting to keep playing, uh, even though I'm about to stop. But, I will also sort of say that of all the arcade and NES games and Commodore games the book could have included, I don't know if this is necessarily one of the more iconic ones that should have been in the Thousand and One book, you know, because, again, there's been big titles. I can't think of them off the top of my head right now because I'm literally fighting for survival. But there have been big titles that uh, we have played in the Saturday Afternoon Gaming series that were left out of the book. And I feel like one of those should have maybe taken this one's place. I don't know. But uh, what do you guys think? I mean... For you uh, folks who grew up uh, and were in the arcades in 85, like, is this one of the more iconic uh, and or hidden gem games out there? Doesn't Not all games in the book have to be a, the most iconic games, but uh, I feel like there should be something special about them, like a hidden gem or something unique or else iconic or influential or something. So I put it to you guys who actually grew up in the arcades in 85. Where did this game stand? Is this a game that you have tons of cherished fond memories of? Is it a game that you think heavily influenced things and like, for instance, Contra wouldn't exist without this one? Or is it sort of one of the more forgettable ones where it's like, oh yeah, you kind of remember this. This was in the arcades, but you know, it was just one of many games out there. Um, let me know. Let me know in the comments down below. Fill me in. Because uh, in 85, I was just a baby. Um, you know? So, yeah, there you go. Anyway, um, I hope you guys had fun, whatever you think of this game. Uh, if you did, don't forget to comment, like the video, all that stuff. Share this video, you know, anything you can do to help spread the word of my channel is a real, a real bonus. You know, check me out on Patreon and stuff like that. Um, but other than that, uh, just tune back in in a couple days, and we'll be back with a new video and a new game. So until next time, my friends, you all take care of yourselves, and we'll see you soon. Alrighty, guys. Peace. Oh my god, a ninja kick guy and a parachute guy teamed up to kill me. <laughs> well, I was never meant to pass this level.